All right, here's the second part on colors. If you remember last time we had something that looked like this. We had managed to fix the colors uh, on the labels uh, for the buttons here. And you click the buttons and we set some background colors and so forth. That's nice. Uh, we have a background for the entire window, which is a deep blue. Uh, which we uh, can parse as a GDK color. The question is, can we um, do something about these buttons? Can we get colors that we want? Uh, the answer is yes. And I've got, got it already in the code here. It's commented out. First of all, you need to notice up here that the regular button is called button 1. The toggle button is called toggle 1, oddly enough. Um, and the other stuff we've had here, this is how you get the Windows background color, and there's the GTK parse and so forth. GDK, not T. D is in dog. All right, um, here is where the colors are going to come from for the buttons. Um, first of all, I'm going to create two CSS providers, pointers to CSS providers. Uh, these are where we're going to set up the CSS code that's going to be applied to the buttons and to other objects. Um, then we actually get the pointer. Now we have to actually create it. Um, we are actually creating a data structure, I assume, of some kind here, which is a CSS provider. Um, these are probably, if you're going to have multiples of these, you probably want to do them once. Either that or figure out how to release them, or you'll have a memory leak. Uh, for example, as you'll see with the toggle button, by changing the color of the toggle button, I also override the um, coloring when it is toggled. Okay. See, when I click Toggle, it's now gray. When I click it again, it goes light. You're going to have to fix that. If you give it a color, it's going to stay that color. Well, in the, but in the callback routine that you get from the, from the toggle signal, toggled signal, you can change the color. You can make it some color indicating that it is depressed. And you can also make it so it's not depressed. But you'll have to do it there. And it's generally wise to declare your CSS providers uh, globally and do it once with the appropriate colors, not instead of allocating it every time you go into the um, callback routine. Otherwise, like I said, memory leak time. So I, get, I, do, I do this, and I actually create the data structures for the uh, CSS providers. This is a reference um, to a web page which has a lot of things about how to set up the various colors. There's a million of them, as you'll see. Well, let's um, let's actually just do it and see what's, ha what's happened. Um, so that I've uncommented the code, and I'm going to recompile it, and I come back up here, and now you see we have a bizarre-looking um, click-me situation. And you see the button still works. You see the toggle button doesn't really work. I mean, it works but it doesn't change color. That's going to be your problem to do. But we have changed the color. Now, you may not like that color. That's your problem. But how did I change the color? Well, first of all, um, I loaded into that CSS provider this text here. Okay? This is CSS. Star just means everything. I'm only going to apply it to one, one item. So um, I'm not a CSS person. This uh, creates a radial, um, uh, radial uh, gradient with an ellipse at the center, and uh, this, this determines the um, intensity of the color and so forth. And these other ones, um, uh, those are if you have additional, um, um, additional items to be provided. I'm going to bring up the web page because there are a million of them down here, and there's examples in the web page of how to do these uh, gradients. Okay, you see them here. I'm not going to get into every one of them. They're very confusing. Well, they're confusing because there's so many numbers and so much detail. I mean, the idea is basically the same. You're drawing a circle, and, you know, circles within circles and so forth. Um, you can also, of course, put icons into the buttons. But this is how you put the colors into the buttons. And um, that is uh, this is just one example. I have uh, plenty of other examples, but... So, for example, it's red, and these are parsable colors, um, and royal blue. Let's put this um, yellow, okay, and um, and I'll go recompile that, and you'll see the difference, because the other one is still the same. See? That's a little bit nicer in terms of... Uh, stands out on the page, certainly more than gray against gray. And also, what I've found in applications, if I group the colors, if I have related buttons, I will group the colors of the buttons so that they're easy, easier to find. I'll give an example of that. Okay, so I, um, 
I load this into the CSS thing, and then I call a function called CSS set. Now it's been uh, declared up here in the front, and it's right down here. What it does is it paints the actual CSS onto the widget. Okay, it receives the um, CSS provider and the widget to get painted. And as you can see up here, well, there's that, there it is right there. CSS set, and it's the uh, provider and the, uh, the button one that's going to be painted. It creates a context, and uh, then it uh, applies uh, the provider uh, to the context. Uh, the context is, of course, associated with the widget. Um, and then there's a priority as to... Uh, as, as to uh, how important this color is, and that's uh, that's a top priority, um, which means the color will happen. Um, the colors and the the application of, of CSS code is is, is layered. Um, it's not either or. There, you know, a a uh, something else of a higher priority could come in and, and change it. Oh, okay, but anyway, you you can look that up. It's a completely separate issue. But anyway, this code here applies that CSS. Uh, provider that was passed down to the widget. The widget, of course, is attached to the context. So uh, the context is created uh, for the widget, in this case, button one, and then, uh, and then toggle button one. Um, and then it's saved. You save the context. And that there will, um, will do it. Um, and uh, as a result, you will um, you'll paint, the, um, paint the widgets. And um, you and as I said in the um, in this documentation here, there's a, a large number of them, the um, and, and a number of different ways to apply it to a number of different things. But that's how you do it. That's the thing. If you Google for how to change color button colors, you won't find. I mean, it's there, but they just um, they're assuming you're doing you're not using Glade in most of these web pages that answer the question. So um, there you go. I have an application which is in progress but it's somewhat garish but you can see the colors here that I have um, gotten a little carried away with but you see there's my buttons the first page last page type thing are uh, grouped in color content and there's some of them they're mainly ellipses I guess but uh, there are other things too gradients that you can like that's not that's not an ellipse um, well that's also not working <laughs> and as, as I said it was a work in progress I'll bring that back up there um, uh, obviously, I need to do something, but this is a this is a player, and I've I've made a lot of color change. One of the color changes I've made is you can see these um, these buttons here. Um, they've got a different. The sliders are not the standard gray against gray. And they're um, they're colorful, and as it turns, I can't move that because nothing's playing. As it turns out, this one changes color, indicating that it's moving up or down, and you can do that. Uh, here is a. Um, um, this is this is a, a switcher. This is and it does have transitions. I did this in another video, but they're kind of neat. You can have all different kinds of sliding transitions, but you can see that there's a um, there's a slider there and so forth. And it's a bunch of sliders here for the equalizer. Yeah, well, the equalizer is not running at the moment, so this code that needs to be fixed. But uh, nonetheless, those are colors, and we'll do the slider uh, code in the next video.